Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Bayang Toys X21. This seems to be a updated model to their last release which was the X16. Now I did get a chance to review that model however the version I received didn't have altitude hold and it didn't have GPS. They later updated it with those features and this model also has altitude hold and GPS and now a 1080p camera as well that records in 1080p to a micro SD card but it also transmits its video feed over Wi-Fi to a mobile device. Now you do have to provide your own micro SD card, it goes in the side there. I'm using a class 10 here, they say it will support a class 6 upwards and up to 64 gigabytes. One other catch with this is that it transmits its FPV feed to your mobile device but on the 5.8 gigahertz band so you have to make sure that your mobile device supports 5.8 gigahertz. Now I usually use a Google Pixel XL which does support 5.8 gigahertz but it would not pick up the hotspot that this camera produces so I've got my old Nexus 5 here and that does pick up the hotspot. I guess it's using a section of the band that my Pixel XL wouldn't recognize which is a shame because you have no idea whether your phone is going to support that or not. Another interesting thing they are saying about this as well is that the video feed will go up to 300 meters. I don't see how that can be the case because well first of all 5.8 gigahertz doesn't go as far as 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and also it is connecting directly to the camera there's no relay to the transmitter so we know that Wi-Fi FPV is only good for about 30 meters so I have no idea how they are claiming that it will go up to 300 meters now this model is limited in height to 100 and 20 meters and it's another one of these models that bridges the gap between toy grade and hobby grade in that we have got a toy grade shell here and a toy grade transmitter but then we have got brushless motors here and ESCs and a GPS in there and a barometer etc as well. Now I should say there are two different versions of this model at the date of this video. This is the single GPS version but they have another one called the dual GPS. Now I don't think that means that there are two GPS transmitters and receivers in the quadcopter. I think what that means is that there's also a GPS module in the transmitter as well and then you get features like follow me and the orbit mode as well which you don't get on this version so I think that's what dual GPS means. However we still should have return to home on this one and position hold as well and of course altitude hold. So it's got a fairly hefty battery in this one so let's check that out. It is using banana plugs and it's a 3S battery and it is 2200 milliamp. It comes with a balance charger that just charges off the balance port here. So it takes a while to charge this one and then that just sits in there like so. And then you have a connector underneath here that you have to plug into the camera as well. And we've got a little gimbal system there. We've also got an on and off switch underneath there as well, but I've just kept it in the on position and then transmitter so we have got both sticks spring loaded however I couldn't find a way to select mode one so it's just in mode two here it takes six AA batteries which I think is a little bit overkill but there you go and then we've got this phone holder here which just slots into the top there now I think another thing as well with this model is that there's no GPS information on the screen. Now the manual says that it should have that but I guess that's the other version because this doesn't really tell you a whole lot. So let's take a look at the buttons here. So what's it say? Number eight high and low gear so that's the rates on there and then nine is a long press for landing there and then what have we got here? for number 19. I hate when they do this. Follow me mode there and orbit mode so I don't think those two are going to work there. And then we've got return to home in the middle here. 
Uh, let's see. Ah, oh, it's so difficult to match up. 13, take a photograph. So that's that top one there. 15 is your video to start the video recording. Uh, where's 16? GPS switch. So you can turn GPS on and off there as well. And I think that is it for the buttons. Oh, I wish they would label them up. Man, that is an absolute pain. You would never remember that. It's telling you how to charge it, etc. So it's saying to arm it. There it is in and out to disarm by the looks of it. Now it says that when I plug it in, I've got to pull the throttle down and then it's going to start its procedure for getting a GPS lock there. And it says that I can also calibrate the compass as well. So it's saying compass is this one so both the sticks like that and then gyro is both the sticks like that if you need to calibrate those uh, yeah the instructions aren't very good and then we have got a wi-fi app as well which is on a qr code so what's the wi-fi app called here I just have a look at this that's called wd pilot fyd so what I'm going to do is plug the battery in. I'm going to connect to the app, wait until I've got enough GPS satellites. I think it says seven satellites. Then I'm going to fly it and see what it's like. Apparently we should get a 13 minute flight time. So let's have a see. So it looks like this bottom button here for video recording doesn't do anything. However, when I've logged into the app, I can see that it says an SD card is present and I can press record and it seems to be recording now so let's fly it another thing i forgot to mention is i was looking at the instructions and there's headless mode aka hopeless mode on this button as well i'm not going to be using that anyway let's go for a takeoff and see what it's like interested to see what the gps hold is like now, of course this model doesn't have optical flow or anything fancy like that so I imagine it will loiter around especially with the wind that I've got here today but you know what it ain't too bad that's hands off there and it seems to be staying in one place the controls are very docile and there seems to be a tiny bit of a delay, either that or it's just a little bit of dampening there. So that must be the low rate. And then the high rate, yeah. So it does have a higher rate. Let's fly it around a little bit. Now it's sunny here today and this black canopy it gets very warm very quickly this is why they make a lot of white quadcopters I think because they just start to burn up in the sun now I don't think that GPS antenna on the top is genuine I think it's a fake I think the GPS antennas underneath the body I could be wrong but it looks a little bit too flimsy for me look at that though this is working well the video looks quite nice as well on the phone let's take it out a little bit and see if the video breaks up or loses connection or anything like that the control shouldn't of course I don't know how far out I am because there's nothing like that on the screen I'm just looking here and it's that's way out of the 30 meter range and I've still got crystal clear video. Look at that. How about that? What is going on here? What trickery? Has it just got an uber powerful transmitter on the camera? Because, wow, that's not breaking up whatsoever. I wish this Nexus 5 was quick enough to run a screen recorder as well. But sometimes running a screen recorder can make the footage look jerky on a phone it looks buttery smooth here 
if I can just do some flying purely off the camera here, so I'm looking down now. And I think the answer is yes! It's like DJI or something. What? That's actually very impressive. I don't want to fly out of this field, obviously. How is it doing that? Some trickery going on here. Oh, it looks like I'm breaking up a little bit there. Yeah, it's going a little bit jerky. That could be my phone though. It's a very old phone. That's got to be... That's got to be 100 meters out and I still have video. I'd never seen that before. That's pretty impressive. And I was flying purely off the phone there for a second. Okay. Let's, let's just check that none of these other features are working, like orbit mode or whatever. Okay, let's face it towards me. GPS hold working very nice there. So let's press this button. Yeah, nothing happens. No beeps or anything like that. Yeah, nothing, nothing. That one beeps, but I don't think anything happens here. So let me refer back to my manual. Which one was the return home? Number 17. Let's send it away a little bit. My worry is there's no stop button, I don't think. So I guess maybe taking it out GPS. Let's press return home, see what happens. I press the button and it's beeping. It's coming back, didn't lift up too high. Let's see where it lands. I'm quite impressed with this. I didn't think it was going to be, you know. So it didn't gain any height, so it's coming down now. What happens if I press that button? Does it stop? Yes, it does. <laughs> I cannot complain about that. So what else have we got here? There's the land button. Is that just going to land on the spot there? It's just beeping, that button. Oh, you have to hold it, I think it, it was. Is it hold to land? Yeah, that's landing. And then I can press it again to stop that. No, it's just going to land, I think. It's going to tip over. It didn't tip over. So will it let me rearm it from there? Yeah. So you hold it to land and it just lands on the spot. And can you hold it again to stop it? There we go, you have to hold it again to stop it. <laughs> I'm impressed with this. One thing I have to say though is it's more expensive now than it was before. I think that was the appeal with the X16 when I first reviewed it. Was that it was fairly cheap and now it's what, £140 for this single GPS model and I think it's £156 for the dual GPS with follow me etc. I think if I was looking at buying this I'd go for that because Oh, it seems to be working nicely here in the flight time. Not too bad, we're on seven minutes at the moment here. So let me just stop the recording here. And then start it again. Just so I've got something here. Is it going to start recording? What's happening? There we go, it's recording again. Okay, let's turn off GPS now and see what that is like. Okay, so that's that button to the side, I think. So now it should just fly away, and it is doing. I have to remember that I'm flying mode two here. <laughs> I got it wrong then. That could have been a disaster. Look at that. Yeah. So it's fairly windy here today. And yeah, it will fly in the wind, but what are we? I think it said on Google 10 mile per hour wind today. I would say no more than that really. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to move forward because there is a limit on the south leveling here. Wow, this, is, this has surprised me a lot, you know?
to me it seemed like a recipe for disaster trying to go cheap with GPS but it actually is working nicely I think this is going to be a popular one you know yeah, it looks pretty cool too oh look at the wind blowing away okay no problem stick GPS on and there we go sorted <laughs> <laughs> Nearly flew it into myself there. Yeah, there is a little bit of a delay on the controls in GPS mode. It's not there when you come out of it. You've got perfect control there, but when you stick GPS on... Look at that. It's a yeah, slight delay on the control, I guess because you're fighting the position holes there. So yeah, be careful with that. Nearly chopped my head off there. That's not good. Well, we had seven minutes and now we're two minutes in on top of that. So, you know, we're talking nearly a 10 minute flight already. I'm not going to take it up to 120 meters. I don't really advise doing that with a toy grade quadcopter, but you know, I'm sure it will do it. It just doesn't have the, the same functions as a Phantom though. So I feel comfortable taking the Phantom up to 120 meters. But not this one. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people doing that though. It's still a very good price for what you get. I'm just looking at the picture here on the phone. I don't know if it's going to come through the same on the SD card, but wow, that looks really clear. I can see the clouds as well. It doesn't look like it's overexposing or underexposing anything. I'm trying to see if I can see any jello. Doesn't look like there's any there on the phone, but there might be on the footage when it's full screen on the computer. We can see part of the leg in shot, I think, there, and I can see some of the props in shot as well. You can control some of the stuff on the app here but I wouldn't looks like we have got a VR mode here just look at that it's just sat there amazing really I can remember tinkering around with APM and Pixhawk and they didn't have a better hold than that so that's that's pretty impressive really I wonder if they're gonna add a gimbal to this at some point and then really compete with DJI but at the low end there's no one really doing that is there like but get a proper good gimbal on the go no shaky footage otherwise there's no point in having a gimbal this thing's still going no LVC either I guess it's you know fairly efficient I think these look like 8 inch props I could be wrong they could be 7 inch I should have measured them. But they definitely look like DJI motors to me. They've got the DJI style key. They're probably a copy, aren't they, of them? I wonder if it's going to indicate to me when the battery is low. I don't have anything on the screen. All I have is the battery of the transmitter. I'm impressed with that position hold. Make sure that you do the compass calibration before you fly it. I did that. Just not giving up whatsoever. Which is good, that's what we want. We want cheap quadcopters that are easy to fly, that fly for a long time. Give you good value for money and what? This one's doing it. Oh, there we go. It looks like I got an LVC here. So I imagine it's just going to land itself at some point. So shall we see? Shall we see how long the LVC goes for? I'm going to stop the recording just in case the camera cuts out. Uh, I don't want to lose the footage. Sometimes these copters have a really early LVC and they still fly around sometimes. The only problem is I'm not getting anything from it 
so if it was far away I wouldn't be able to see that the battery was low there's no beeps so no telemetry coming through here and looking at those pictures it, it says that you do get that information on there so maybe that's the other version I don't know I definitely like to check out that version after seeing how well this one flies and the flight time as well usually when a company says 30 minute flight time it has a seven minute flight time <laughs> oh where's it going it looks like it's returning home there Did you see it lifted up for a little bit so yeah I think maybe it's noticed that I'm not putting any controls in and now it's gonna land it's landing itself here that's pretty decent probably gonna tip over the long grass though no look at that it landed itself and it stopped the props that is impressive well there you go that is my review of the Bayang Toys X21 thumbs up from me I like it it might be worth checking out what the other version is going to be like because I don't think the price is too different but other than that I'll put a link in the description and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers